action with Nicolas Cage. So I will admit right off the bat, there's 20 of these movies split into 10, two parts, and I'm not excited. There's a lot of these that look like straight to VOD stuff, like low budget, cheap movies, especially the later movies, starting with Firebirds. This is essentially Top Gun, but not as good as Top Gun. Cage is playing this aircraft guy that likes flying aircrafts and Tommy Lee Wallace in it. I was like, hey, you know what? Him and Cage, let's see what they do. And kind of nothing really. Lots of aircraft flying scenes and just scenes that like the whole flying stuff felt like it was going on forever. I felt like it would just never end. And then to add on top of that, there's a romance storyline between Cage and his other lady flying aircrafts. Now granted, this is what Top Gun did as well. The whole older like teacher and Tom Cruise being young one. But that was kind of like exciting because it was taboo essentially. This is, I don't know. It's whatever. Now I am making a lot of comparisons to Top Gun, but that's what this movie really is top gun just not as good and then the movie ends at the very aircrafty aircraft space not space but flying shenanigans you know like i thought tommy lee wallace and this cage were gonna have some interactions and they do but it would be a lot more interesting a lot more fun but this movie takes itself way too seriously for that so it was all right the rock which is a movie directed by michael bay which is why this movie is so much fun to watch there's the typical like bay explosions on tops of explosions the movie's fun mainly because of the chemistry between sean connery and nicholas cage they have this like father-son relationship done really well the premise this guy has to have an attack on alcatraz by sending a chemical gas or something to alcatraz to get rid of it and cage and the others they don't want that at all whatsoever there's like this whole team that want to stop this guy but slowly but surely they all get taken out except for sean Connery and Nicolas Cage both left together and that's the best part their interactions with each other it's what sells the movie for me like you know there's all the Michael Bay stuff explosions but those moments and scenes of him and Sean Connery together were really good I'm not gonna lie though as I'm talking right now I'm slowly forgetting the other characters and stuff in this movie all I remember is Sean Connery Nicolas Cage and Alcatraz save it from dying essentially which is an issue it means it's not really a good sign that it's a good movie but really fun I would 100% rewatch this movie for how fun it is but also Sean Connery and Cage. Con Air is another really fun movie where you have inmates on a loose but on a plane while you have Nicolas Cage he's there for like killing a man as well like seven years ago but all he wants to do is get back home and meet his family his wife and his daughter because in the very beginning montages he's writing letters back and forth vice versa with the daughter heartfelt and all he wants to do is go home right but then you got like Cyrus the Virus which is a ridiculous name it is so stupid but man it's so much fun he starts ruining all these plans and Cage has to play along even though he's like oh, I just want to get home and so you have this like cat and mouse very tense game of cage has to play along has to lie to that police officer lady and lie to his friend sitting next to him in his bunk bed let people die let size the virus kill some people let him take control while he stabs him in the back meanwhile you have john kosak on the ground being a good cop being a good like detective hold on is he a detective i forgot but he's the one that's like hey this plane is getting taken by criminals because it got lost came back up what's up no one wants to listen to him and so he does things on his own takes that nice looking car that i'm assuming his boss has takes it for a ride he's the one that only believes that cage is a good guy helping Kate that's not on the plane from the ground you got danny trejo seeing danny trejo without a mustache was a bit weird we'll see him who doesn't love danny trejo he's awesome dave chappelle when i first saw him i was like wait a minute that looks like a young ass dave chappelle pulling out that like stick or whatever out of his mouth burning the next dude to get all the inmates out and it was him and you know what i really liked him played him more for last because obviously he's a stand-up comedian but seeing him here was really damn cool i didn't realize that i knew he had a dave chappelle show but like acting anywhere else i didn't know that and so seeing him here was really cool as well cyrus the virus again another goofy ridiculous character but it works for this movie because it's so much fun inmates getting loose on a plane sounds how's this gonna be fun i don't know they just made it a lot more fun with cage trying to play double duty play along trying to betray lying to nice people lying to very bad people as well eventually all hell breaks loose because his friend dies he's the one that's like hey i'm the one that betrayed you kills him and cage is like you know what group playing around i'm gonna sabotage this whole plane and he does and it just so happens to land in vegas and i'm assuming all the effects are all on set all the explosions like they had to rebuild like a vegas set essentially and it looked pretty damn cool ton of explosions and whatnot and just crash landing that was all really damn cool all this leads to john kosak meeting him and everyone getting involved letting go of nicholas cage as his criminal and then they end it off with him wanting to meet his family he doesn't meet his family so conveniently by the way it is super convenient but whatever i'll let it go she's scared because 
they saw burn up and make clothes the whole like gift teddy bear stuff that was really heartfelt as well they all embrace and hug and that's how the movie ends in vegas with the plane crashed into it and so movie's a lot of fun i'm shocked i'm actually having fun with these movies so far because this one is so much fun just animates on the loose ruining the plans of cage having to play along he's just a family man you know he wants to get back to his family and instead he has to play criminal because he doesn't want to die off. This movie straight up is great. It's my new favorite Nicolas Cage and now John Travolta movie. The premise in this movie is so ridiculous that it actually works in its favor of being a great movie where Travolta is wearing the face of Nicolas Cage and then Nicolas Cage is wearing the face of John Travolta so they're both living lives that they don't want and both make it very personal because both of their loved ones have been killed and now their fight at first while it's like you know a criminal and a good cop turns into something very much personal. It is so much fun. It is great. Like it's actually the one time where I'm like this is a great movie. The 3D printing human faces and ear was so stupid and ridiculous. Like, you know what? It's already over the top with like the stuff that Cage is doing. So seeing a 3D printing ear and face, it worked for me. And then the actual like face surgery scene, it looks so good that I would believe it. This movie came out nowadays. And then you got Nicolas Cage. Like the reason this movie is also great is because Cage is doing stuff like this. And then you got John Travolta doing stuff like this. And it's like, okay, this movie, it knows what it is. This is amazing. Him dancing in that church scene, moving his head around. What is going on? I laughed my ass off watching that shit. Touching people inappropriately and then just making that like face and noise. Like it's awful. It's horrible and creepy, but man, it's just, it's great. It's fantastic. Once Cage is Travolta, he makes threats about fucking his wife. And then he gets to the daughter, which is like, I know it's not the actual father. It's not John Travolta, but it's still creepy because the face is John Travolta and so he's like checking her out getting like her smoke and whatnot even though i know what's going on it's still kind of creepy there's even one point where he's like hey i'll give you this knife so you learn self-defense because her boyfriend's being a jerk and with cage being cage just beats the shit out of him gives her a knife about poking it in and i didn't think that would come back but it actually came back all around near the end where she got the knife twisted it the whole knife stuff backfired on him and so I really like that that was brought back very late later on and then that church scene of like john travolta coming in singing whatever he's singing and then the most ridiculous scene of like spins like there's a lot of spinning and shooting in this movie i don't know why but it's really dumb but fun there's like a i got a gun you got a gun and then like the wives come in as well i got a gun and then another gun comes in. it's like wait a minute, this is a whole gun v gun v gun situation cage's girl dies and then that's when both of them go out on the boat have their boat fight which by the way it is clearly two stunt doubles on that boat especially when they get on ground they're flying it's stunt doubles man okay they're not even trying to hide the fact that's not even both of them two stunt doubles doing their job and the stunts are actually really cool as well like most of the practical effects explosions and actual set pieces is really good the whole airplane the very beginning where he's like singing to him lying about that shit that was really cool as well and so you have great actors over the topness great explosions great stunt doubles that are clearly visible to the screen and a ridiculous concept of 3d printing a human face moves bound to be great cage has the audacity to say hey man going for you but i shot your son it was an accident get over it made this shit very personal and then his own brother dies and so he's like you know what i really gotta go after this guy in the end he's able to kill him which is kind of creepy because he's seen his own face in a way kill himself by the end all that is fixed john travolta looks like john travolta and then there's his son this kid that cage had that looks like his own son this is his second chance of having a son again because he lost him so yeah that was face off maybe the best movie ever from nicholas cage and john travolta gone in 60 seconds this movie is essentially gta and fast saga before it became the fast saga they even mentioned gta in this movie this is clearly just like gta fast racing cars so cage has a brother that's in trouble and he needs to get 50 like nice looking cars to these certain people that will give them money i think or their brother will die essentially they even have like a group it's not an original idea gone in 60 seconds feels like the same movie it just has nicholas cage angelina jolie and other actors i don't recognize that's really it that's the only difference really they even have a family dinner at the end like what more is just similar to the fast saga they need to get 50 cars they have a group they have a family and uh, they get there this is before two murder so angina jolie she's in here doing her thing the chick of the group has a thing with nicholas cage scene of them watching a couple outside the window which was uh it was good you know but also scouting out some things and maybe getting information about the guys that get his brothers in trouble and whatnot so they have issues with like getting all these 50 cars but also now they have the cops on them as 
as well. And so it's just more stress, more like, okay, we need to figure this shit out because if we don't, we're all fucked essentially. In the end, they're all able to stop the bad guys, but also one of the cops are actually on his side of being like, hey, I know you're not bad. I probably shouldn't let you go, but I'm gonna let you go because you're clearly Nicolas Cage. You look cool, you sound cool. I'm gonna let you go. And he's like, okay, don't let me change my mind. Tells him a bunch of stuff. He's let go. There's that family dinner. Comparisons in this video, Fiber, Top Gun, this one, Fast Saga, like who's copying who? I don't know. But it ends on a family dinner for family. And then, yeah, that's how the movie ends. It's a decent movie. It's a fun ride, I guess. Not amazing, but you know, it's fun. National Treasure is another movie that I remember seeing in school, specifically in Spanish 1 or 2. I forgot, but you know, I'm gonna shout out Mr. Reese, R U I Z. Mr. Reese, man, this guy, he had Disney cutouts of Disney stuff. He's a big Disney fan. Clearly, he had Disney stuff all over his class. Very small class, but he was a fan. He introduced me into a bunch of other students, National Treasure, which is a good movie. I don't think it's great, but man, it's this is fun to rewatch. This is essentially Uncharted slash Indiana Jones that just has Nicholas Cage, his friend Riley, a love interest, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, and the treasure, which being Declaration of Independence. There's like a map behind it, and then he fired to uh, see the message and whatnot. Sean Bean is the main villain, which I think, is he the villain from GoldenEye? The guy that supposedly dies and turns out he's the villain? I think that's him, right? And that's a big, I think. If it's not, oh well. But either way, he's fine in the movie. What matters is this treasure, and like the actual montage, like this movie is essentially a heist movie, a part of it, at least the first beginning of it, is essentially a heist movie being produced by Disney and it's actually good. They learned that paper from Sean Bean, seeing Abigail, using Abigail, but then her having to tag along because she now knows about this whole ruse and whatnot, having to lie to her. Both Cage and Abigail eventually get together because I don't know why there's gotta be a love interest, I guess. Riley's the funny, like, not funny, but he's the one that has the brains behind, like, the whole technology and stuff, which, by the way, again, seeing early 2000s technology is just funny to watch nowadays, you know? It's dated, but it's fun to watch. And then the movie ends with the last like big set piece like the underground tombs and the whole fire like clearly just like okay this is uncharted indiana jones but i love it they all get rid of sean bean they all make it out alive everyone's safe and then uncle ben and cage they have a really you know complicated relationship because mom is in there seems like they're always fighting or at least the last time that they met it seems to have ended with an argument but you know all of that's kind of resolved as well but yeah the first national treasure it is good i don't think it's amazing but man it is good a little bit of nostalgia is in there and then there was a second one, which isn't as good, but I still like it. It's still an enjoyable movie. Things kind of not redone, but just more of the same, which is not always the best for a franchise. It is now because I think it's the third one coming out, but as a sequel, it works. It doesn't do anything quite different. It's still the same. Abigail and Cage, they have a strained relationship. There's a great scene of Cage arguing loudly at the museum. Riley's book sales are awful. He lost his car. There's more Uncle Ben, which is, I don't mind. He also likes his older lady, like, okay sure Ed harris is the villain as well who is good in it or fine but you know it's more of the same which i don't mind wish they would have done something different but also how do you do something different when this is essentially another indiana jones type movie you know it does have another amazing last set piece of this big like water temple or like waterfall thing and one person has to stay around or open the doors and whatnot like it looked expensive because of water and just taxes probably unless they shot in like a vancouver or atlanta or la typical places if you shoot anywhere else i feel like tax is gonna be a big issue but yeah that's it like again same stuff eddie here's the villain he's fine cool last set piece everything's all fine riley's fine he got his car back uncle ben is fine you know cage and abby go get back together because why not the one guy from modern family he's like the side piece i guess of this movie she's going out with them doesn't work out but yeah more of national treasure bangkok dangerous i think this is a american remake of a thai movie i could be wrong maybe i'm thinking of something else i think it really in 1999 i think so i haven't seen that one maybe the film would be lesser than it should be if i watched that but nick cage is an assassin in this movie he's going to bangkok thailand to assassinate someone important and along the way he meets kong his laughable comedy centric friend who's there because i don't know he wants to help him or something and then he falls in love which uh, okay sure thai girl she's deaf wants to talk to her go on a date with her they do things work out here and there does feel that if she finds out 
out that he's a killer and an assassin, she'll run away. And that's kind of what happens, really. Where she's like, I like you, but are you a bad guy and whatnot? And he is, kind of. He's an assassin. I mean, he kills people for a living. And so when you have Kong, who's all right, this really all right love thing, and an all right script with an all right action. Like, I can't think of an action sequence in here that's good, but it's not bad. It's like, okay, this is okay, you know? You know what? I don't know why he decides to mentor Kong. Is it just because he was there with him or something? Or maybe Kong is a original character from the Thai version that I don't know about, but Kong's inclusion felt weird. It felt like a setup to like a sequel because the movie ends with him looking off in the distance or whatever, being taught by the great assassin known as Nicolas Cage, you know? I kind of felt nothing. In the end, Cage accepts the fact that he's a killer and that this Thai girl isn't going to accept him and so he accepts death. He kills the guy that he was supposed to kill and himself and then the movie ends with Kong. But I didn't know upon research, there's a alternate ending and this other ending, Kong becomes a badass for some reason and saves him, saves Cage. He's at the airport, says his goodbye and thanks him. He'll be an assassin himself too. And so in this ending, Cage lives. It's a happier ending, but I think I prefer the theatrical ending where Cage accepts that he's just a killer. He's an assassin and accepts death. I actually really prefer that over happy ending, but either way, it doesn't matter because the movie overall, it's okay. The Sorcerer's Apprentice is another weird one because I don't see Nick Cage doing, or not doing, but being a wizard from Harry Potter, essentially. The magic and CG in this movie actually looks good. It looks decent. The issue is, I don't know if I care that much about this movie because Cage with long hair, doing magic, Alfred Molina is like the villain, so it's cool seeing him, you know? Yeah, I don't know. And it also tells a very simple, generic story of, hey, this kid, you've got talent. Let me teach you and I'll show you the way to do wizardry, Harry potter stuff you know it's like okay that's fine add on top of that there's a love interest i don't care about this i don't there's so much i don't care on this video it's just so much but i don't care it comes back in the end sure don't care i think the most impressive or dumb part is that cage dies and this kid is able to bring him back by restarting his heart it's magical i get that but man it sounds like yeah you know no stakes granted this is again by disney and it's meant to be a kid's movie and so it really wasn't for me but i just thought it was funny that that he brought back Cage by restarting his heart, which I wish was possible in real life, but it's not possible. But anyways, movie's not for me. Wizard stuff, Harry Potter stuff, Cage has a long wig, Arthur Molina's good, sure, I like him. Yeah, it's okay. Season of the Witch. The main thing I really like about this movie is Ron Perlman, Hellboy himself, and Cage interacting. Their first scene together is at war. Both are making bets about, hey, you take 300, I take 300. Their banter with each other about making bets on how many people that they can kill was great. And it's great throughout the whole movie. And that's pretty much it in terms of positives. The movie isn't bad. It's just, again, it's the same reason why I don't watch Game of Thrones or anything way back in the day. I'm just not interested in medieval times and war back in the day. I really don't care. There is one cool practical effect where cage or i think hellboy himself opened up the blanket there are two bodies dead and it actually looks really good i'm not sure if it's like cg but i think it's practical i don't think it's cg there are cgi shots obviously the war and all those pan shots of thousands and thousands of people and then the story itself they have to save a girl or something i forgot they all think it's a normal girl but she's not normal i think she has powers i think it means that this is a fantasy war universe sure okay like i don't know it just isn't interesting to me at all it's more like oh, okay cool is that it can i now get more cage and ron perlman no okay in the, in the end they all die all of fallen soldiers they all die leaving this group being like okay i will appreciate these uh, soldiers commemorate them all that stuff and then that's what the movie ends so yeah it's okay and that was it for action part one surprisingly a lot of fun aside from some of them face off is great because you know it's great the rock was a lot of fun by michael bay con air is also a lot of fun and then the national treasure movies which are always fun even the second one thought i was gonna dread watching these movies but maybe the second part will be the ones that are like oh these are all the vod stuff but i'm being hopeful so that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching